Today I will cover the Second Punic War, made famous for two reasons. The episode when Hannibal crossed the Alps with his elephants, and the, also the fantastic inventions by Archimedes. The Second Punic War was fought again between Rome and Carthage between 218 BC and 201 BC. This war was caused for two main reasons. The first reason was how the First Punic War ended, and the second reason was a dispute over the colonies of Carthage, specifically Hispania, Iberia. In an unfortunate sequence of events, the Roman Republic imposed punitive reparations on Carthage after the First Punic War, and this crippled the debt-stricken Carthage. Carthage, in turn, failed to pay their large army of foreign mercenary troops, and this triggered the brutal mercenary war between 241 and 238. Hamilcar Barca, a veteran of the First Punic War, put down the mercenary war, but in turn some rebels retreated to Sardinia. Carthage disastrously pursued the rebels and in turn the Roman Republic, rather opportunistically, claimed this was an act of war by Carthage. Rome forced a weakened Carthage to hand over Sardinia, Corsica and even more reparations in 238 BC. During this period, resentment only grew in a humiliated Carthage. Hamilcar Barca headed to southern Iberia in 237 BC to expand Carthage's colony there and gain additional finance and military might to prepare for a future confrontation with Rome. His plan was to develop the Carthage colonies to help recover from the catastrophic losses of the First Punic War. Carthaginian Iberia now provided silver mines, agriculture, manpower and shipyards. In 226 BC, Rome agreed a treaty with Carthage regarding the division of Iberian territory broadly along the Ebro River. Hannibal, the son of Hamilcar Barca, became the commander of the Carthaginian mercenary forces in Iberia. He would prove one of the greatest military commanders in history. He had a new plan to take the fight to the Romans. In a new complication, Saguntum, a fortified town south of the dividing line between Rome and Carthage promptly allied with Rome in 219 BC. Hannibal's army first put Saguntum under siege. Every adult was offered the opportunity to surrender and leave. Each refused and was promptly executed. Rather than supporting Saguntum, Rome abandoned them but promptly declared war on Carthage. In 218 BC, the Roman navy repelled a Carthaginian naval attack off Lilibium in Sicily, and they then went on to capture Malta, the nearest Carthaginian base to Sicily. Back in northern Italy, restless Gallic tribes of the Chiselpine Gaul attacked the Roman colonies, causing the Roman settlers to flee. In Iberia, Hannibal massed his Carthaginian army and led it along the coastline towards Gaul. A Roman army bound for Iberia landed in Massalia, modern-day Marseille. But Hannibal craftily entered Gaul through an inland route, evading the Roman forces and avoiding raising any alarms. The Roman army of Gnaeus Cornelius Scipio Calvus defeated the Carthaginian army of Hanno at the Battle of Sisa in 218 BC. Stationed between Ebro and the Pyrenees, the Roman forces blocked the route of Iberian resupply to Hannibal in Italy. The Carthaginian commander in Iberia, Hasdrubal, was defeated as he tried to navigate the Roman forces, instead taking heavy casualties. 
Hasdrubal was torn between the orders to support Hannibal in Italy, but also maintain order in Iberia. In 217 BC, 40 Carthaginian and Iberian warships unsuccessfully tried to take the Roman base at the Battle of Ebro River. The Carthaginian army led by Hannibal reached the Alps and famously and dramatically crossed them in 15 days. Thus Hannibal arrived in Piedmont, northern Italy with 20,000 infantry, 6,000 cavalry and a number of elephants. The Romans were taken completely by surprise. They had expected Carthage to fight a defensive campaign as before and at best attempt to invade Sicily. The Carthaginian army of Hannibal ran amok on the Italian mainland of the Roman Republic. His ranks swelled with the Gallic tribes who were eager to fight the Romans. Hannibal annihilated a large Roman army at the Battle of Trebia. Roman armies were placed at Aretium Arezzo and also on the Adriatic coast in an attempt to block Hannibal's advance south. In 217 BC, Hannibal fought the Roman army of Gaius Flaminius at the Battle of Lake Trasimene and wiped out the Roman army. He then continued south, looking for more allies. In 216 BC, the Roman Senate created the largest army in Roman history in order to confront Hannibal. During the Battle of Cannae, a much larger Roman army was catastrophically wiped out by Hannibal and this defeat rocked the Roman Republic to its very foundations. The Romans realizing they could not beat Hannibal in a military confrontation appointed Quintius Fabius. Fabius had realized how good a general Hannibal was and instead adopted what was called the Fabian strategy. This was a novel approach of effectively guerrilla warfare where the Romans avoided large-scale battles with Hannibal's army but instead harried his forces and also attacked his allies in his absence. Fabius hoped to damage the Carthaginian morale over time and in particular the morale of Hannibal's mercenaries by cutting off supplies to Hannibal but not all Roman leaders agreed with Fabius or indeed cooperated with him. The Fabian strategy proved unpopular. Fabius was unkindly described as the delayer and this left Hannibal to run riot across the Italian mainland waiting for an attack that never came. In 216 BC Philip V king of Macedonia allied with Carthage and this triggered the first Macedonian war against Rome. The Roman Republic wisely neutralized the Macedonian threat by allying with a group of Greek city-states to fight Macedonia. In the same year, Syphax, a Numidian king in northern Africa, declared for Rome. This opened a new front in North Africa. After the huge Carthaginian defeat at the Battle of Dertosa in Iberia in 215 BC, Hannibal's brother, Mago Barca, left Hannibal's side in Italy to go and stabilise Iberia. The Fabian strategy was working. Hieronymus of Syracuse disastrously allied with Hannibal to fight the Roman Republic. In return, he had been offered the island of Sicily the Syracusan army was no match for the Roman army and Syracuse was soon under siege. The famous inventor Archimedes developed fantastic war machines to resist the Romans. Himilco led a Carthaginian army to free Syracuse and soon overwhelmed a number of Roman towns in Sicily, including the key coastal city of Agrigentum. Agrigento. By 214 BC, the majority of southern city-states in Italy began to ally with Hannibal against the Romans. Carthage's new allies in southern Italy had little in common with either Carthage or indeed each other. Hannibal's new allies also were an onerous responsibility for him as they increased the land area Hannibal's army had to defend from Roman reprisals. The Romans, desperate to increase their forces for a new campaign 
into southern Italy were now recruiting slaves and criminals. The Romans continued to avoid direct confrontation. The Romans also threatened Carthaginian supporting towns when Hannibal was not there. All this time, the Roman Republic controlled island of Sicily blocked any seabound support and resupply of Hannibal. By 212 BC, the Romans eventually did storm Syracuse during a nighttime assault. Archimedes was killed by a Roman soldier as they took control of the city. Rome captured and reinforced Saguntum in 212 BC. The Carthaginians of Hasdrubal Barca and the Roman forces faced each other in 211 BC at the Battle of Upper Bastis. The Romans lost comprehensively. The surviving Roman forces retreated to their coastal stronghold near Ebro. The Roman army recovered the Carthaginian strategic city of Agrigentum in 210 BC. Other Carthaginian towns in Sicily soon surrendered, were betrayed or overwhelmed. In 209 BC, a new Roman force led by Scipio Africanus captured Cartago Nova in Iberia and went on to seize gold, silver, artillery, as well as releasing prisoners and hostages. In 208 BC, Hasdrubal Barca was defeated by Scipio Africanus at the Battle of Baecula, but he did manage to limit his losses. Scipio failed to prevent Hasdrubal from crossing into Gaul towards Italy. By 207 BC, Hasdrubal had led another Carthaginian army across the Alps into Italy, hoping to link up with Hannibal. The Romans split their armies to fight Hasdrubal Barca, destroying both Hasdrubal and his army at the Battle of Metaurus in 207 BC. By this time, Hannibal was confined to the toe of southern Italy, as most towns had now declared their allegiance to the Roman Republic. The Romans had finally reasserted their military dominance on the Italian mainland. In 206 BC, the Carthaginians reduced their losses by dividing up several Numidian kingdoms in northern Africa with Syphax. As a consequence, a disinherited Numidian prince called Massinisa would now side with Rome and prove to be a very useful ally. The Battle of Ilipa caused Scipio to lead an Italian and Iberian army to defeat a larger Carthaginian army. This brutally terminated Carthaginian aspirations in Iberia. The final Carthaginian coastal city of Gades, modern day Cadiz, defected to the Romans. A mutiny broke out amongst the Roman troops, stoked by Iberian leaders who now wanted the Roman forces to leave Iberia hot on the heels of the Carthaginians. But Scipio was having none of this. In 205 BC, Mago, Hannibal's brother, made one final unsuccessful attempt to recapture New Carthage during another Iberian uprising. Mago now left Iberia for Chiselpine Gaul and landed in Genoa. He linked up his Iberian army with other Gallic and Ligurian troops. Hannibal now fought the inconclusive Battle of Crotona in 204 BC in southern Italy. The Romans now saw weakness and decided to change their approach from defence to attack. Publius Cornelius Scipio Africanus landed a Roman army in North Africa in 204 BC. The intent was to see whether Carthage would allow Hannibal to remain in Italy while Carthage was at risk. Mago's progress in the Po Valley was abruptly ended at the Battle of Insubria in 203 BC. In North Africa, Syphax was taken prisoner by Massinissa, an ally of Rome at the Battle of Chirta. As Roman Carthage began negotiations to end the war, Hannibal and his veteran army, along with the remnants of Mago's army, returned to North Africa. Hannibal's return stiffened Carthaginian morale, but this only intensified Roman mistrust. Carthage promptly rejected Roman terms, and Hannibal now led an army of veterans of the Italian campaigns and a number of African troops. The pivotal Battle of Zama in 202 BC in North Africa saw Hannibal attempt to use 80 elephants 
to break up the Roman infantry formations. His plan backfired and the elephants actually broke up the Carthaginian ranks. The Roman and Numidian cavalry repulsed the Carthaginian cavalry and attacked the rear of the Carthaginian infantry. The Carthaginian ranks panicked and Hannibal was one of the few to survive the battle. The terms Rome offered now stripped Carthage of all its colonies and imposed punitive reparations. Carthage was forbidden to have war elephants and its armed forces were severely limited. Carthage could now only declare war with Rome's express permission. Carthaginians initially argued over whether to accept these terms, but eventually they did in 201 BC. Having tamed Carthage, Scipio was renamed Scipio Africanus. Rome emerged as the dominant power in the Western Mediterranean. This had wide cultural and political implications on the future development of the Roman Republic and the Mediterranean itself. This underlined Roman confidence in its ability to fight overseas campaigns. Carthage instead was severely weakened and was no longer a military or commercial threat to Rome. Despite being on the losing side, Hannibal became a legendary leader in history. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and maybe subscribe to the channel. That way you can enjoy more of this content. Thank you. Click here for some more videos you may be interested in.